so anyway moving on thank you very much for this uh, wonderful topic actually i as innocuous as it uh, sounded it was quite uh, enlightening and you know a huge uh, acknowledgement again that we really need to be aware of this and be a little more mindful when we are looking at uh, we are treating patients who are elderly and uh, definitely ask them if they are suffering from any symptoms of hypoglycemia so with that i thank the entire dynamic team of diabetes india for this opportunity without much ado well the technical group of population projections for india states that we had 138 million elderly patient persons in india in 21 and this is going to be plus 56 million by uh, in the next 7 8 years so we know that our elderly population is increasing we also know that we need to develop our skills more and more to treat and manage this geriatric population again we also are aware that they are more prone to macro and microvascular complications of diabetes and improving glycemic control is definitely associated with enhanced risk of hypoglycemia amongst others and economic burden increases and then again how we measure hypoglycemia and test is also a little dubious because we depend on glucose meters some of the striking challenges in recognizing this uh the symptoms in the elderly include uh just the recognition may be completely difficult because of non specific symptoms again it may be confusing because there may be dizziness vertigo stroke like symptoms etc making it difficult for a diagnosis it may even resemble dementia like uh, symptoms like agitation confused confusion or behavior change and it they may find it difficult with age related dementia setting in to even convey this to us and their family so overall there may be very little warning or uh, awareness of autonomic symptoms which makes it even more difficult to recognize and treat surveys across have shown that perception of hypoglycemia in the elderly specifically has been associated as you know just not feeling well that's a very non specific symptom and can be you know dismissed uh, again this corroborates with the accord study the landmark accord study where most of the patients reporting hypoglycemia said that they were just tired or weak not specifically for hypoglycemia in older people unfortunately the autonomic symptoms of hypoglycemia occur at a lower a blood glucose level while the counter regulation uh, or cognitive dysfunction occurs at a higher blood glucose level which means a uh, both the kind of symptoms happen together which makes recognition even more difficult this is the impaired awareness of hypoglycemia and one episode sets up a vicious cycle of recurrent episodes worsening the, worsening the awareness in the patient impact on of aging on type 2 diabetes we know the disease itself progresses plus we may have complications uh, renal hepatic cardiovascular cognitive decline visual and manual dexterity problems even lack of self -care, self care or assistance or even adherence to medication uh, and then limitations in drug uh, choice for our elderly increased frailty which is an important determinant and comorbidities polypharmacy and so on and so forth all these together increase the risk of hypoglycemia in patients causes of hypoglycemia well this is uh, no surprise to you you know that as the blood glucose levels fall there is decrease in the insulin secretion there's uh, increase counter uh, increase in the counter regulatory hormones like uh, the glucagon and epinephrine they all uh, you know work in tandem to bring the blood glucose up but with someone with diabetes this counter regulatory mechanism is well disturbed and almost absent right but in the elderly with all the risk factors and the uh, and the aspects that i already mentioned this is much worse counter regulation is defective with loss of ability to lower insulin increase glucagon or epinephrine which can trigger off the symptoms of hypoglycemia so that doesn't happen 
And then again, response in the elderly to hypoglycemia is determined by how frequently they have experienced hypoglycemia. Because the glucose level at which the counter-regulation sets in is lower and lower with every episode, making it really difficult to recognize. And this is the impaired awareness of, uh, of uh, uh, glycemia. Thus, this combination of defective counter-regulation and unawareness is called hypoglycemia-associated associated autonomic failure, and it aug is augmented with all the other risk factors in our elderly. Again, I'm not going to belabor on this, but besides age and you know, use of polypharmacy and comorbidities and complications, the striking feature is you know, insulin or sulfonylurea therapy because that's where we can make a difference and of course malnutrition and even frailty, hypoglycemia and frailty. This is an important condition we often dismiss. We don't really think much about it or don't intervene to change it. It's nothing but a condition characterized by a reduction in physiological reserve and in the ability to resist physical or psychological stressors associated with weight loss, weakness, decreased physical activity, complete exhaustion, and slow gait speed. We dismiss this completely as associated with advancing age, but it's driven by molecular, cellular, and physiological uh, uh, systems disruption, and also affects cardiovascular and metabolic or systems le further leading to more frailty. So aging is associated with hyperglycemia, as we know, right? Mid-age, with the visceral fat increase, we know that insulin resistance increases, there's hyperglycemia. But this is the reverse. And frail elderly may be, or, or may be moving towards hypoglycemia due to malnutrition and comorbidities. So this change in risk factors with increasing age is observed with other cardiovascular metabolic factors as well. And all this together is called reverse metabolic syndrome. This is a bi-directional relationship and a really vicious one. You can see the risk factors of hypoglycemia with not only age and undernutrition and other things that I mentioned. They all lead to frailty. But the complications of frailty, uh, which include... Uh, which include falls and fractures, etc. All that further complicates and uh, leads to hypoglycemia. So the uh, clinical outcomes are much worse and the quality of life deteriorates even more rapidly. This was a very enlightening study, the HAT study or Hypoglycemia Assessment Tool Study. And they found that whether it was type 1 or type 2 diabetes, Rates of hypoglycemia were in RCTs were quite uh, equivalent to those in the real world. Or in fact, real world was even more. So four-week prospective studies across 24 countries and India was part of it. Uh, and they, these, these were patients exclusively on insulin therapy and almost half of them reported hypoglycemia. And you can see as compared to the global incidence of severe hypoglycemias, the South Asian uh, incidence was even more. Again, severe hypoglycemia requiring medical intervention. Uh, this is a US-based study found that higher HbA1c was uh, associated with higher rates of severe hypoglycemia requiring medical intervention with no change over time. And three to five times higher uh, hypoglycemia was experienced by those on insulin as compared to the secretagogues, but even more uh, pronounced as compared to the non-secretagogue medications. This is just further to show you, and you may not be able to read it, but let me just uh, interpret that for you, that with advancing age, especially the turtiles between 75 to 84, and then above 85 were associated with the highest number of hypoglycemic events, whether overall severe or nocturnal. The consequences, we know there are cognitive dysfunction consequences and other consequences related to the brain, uh, also neuroglycopenia. The heart, we know those very well. The musculoskeletal ones also, the falls and the fractures, etc. Uh, and circulatory ones. 
There's inflammation setting in, coagulation disturbances, hemodynamic changes, endothelial dysfunction. All these lead to the cardiac abnormalities. And one more, which is frailty. It, it, it sort of forms a psychological barrier and is one of the biggest deterrents to intensifying therapy or intensifying therapy to achieve that glycemic target that we always want. Physicians and patients both alike are fearful of hypoglycemia. Also the family and to avoid it or prevent it, some, some of our patients may overeat and lead, that, leads to, uh, uh, that leads to weight gain and we are all quite, I think uh, we recognize that easily. But overall, there is again low treatment satisfaction and barriers to adhering to the therapy because the patients tend to undertreat or you know just omit some of the medications, thinking that uh, hypoglycemia that, or the the symptoms that they are experiencing are attributed to those. The HAT study again uh, looked at the impact of hypoglycemia and found that whether it was type one diabetes patients, type two diabetes, they either the consequences included. Uh, you know, urgent appointments with the doctors, nurses, requiring medical assistance or increase in the caloric intake, reduction in exercise, even missing insulin injections or decrease in monitoring itself. This cohort study from Dr. Kunti and group from the UK uh, looked at the hypoglycemia and risk of uh, cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality in insulin-treated patients. And again, whether type 1 or type 2, the cardiovascular events were more pronounced or more experienced by those without any prior cardiovascular history. And even the all-cause mortality increased in both these subgroups, but it was not as significant as would have been expected. So this study ended up highlighting the importance of cardiovascular risk in those who experience hypoglycemia by showing that hypoglycemia is associated with very early cardiovascular events and mortality. Another study or meta-analysis published in 21 uh, found that the absolute risk of 5 and 10 year uh, of hospitalization for severe hypoglycemia in those below or above HbA1c of 7% found that the hospitalization definitely increases, but not really conclusive or definitely uh, not that the CVD-related mortality increases because of severe hypoglycemia. The overall or all-cause mortality that does marginally increase. A, Danish cohort, a Denmark cohort study found this uh, on uh, a 20-year uh, uh, follow-up of type 1 and type 2 diabetes patients that definitely the mortality risk in these patients with severe hypoglycemia does increase, but it was non-conclusive on the actual occurrence of uh, increased death uh, as such because of hypoglycemia. Again, if you look at why this is happening, the older patients treated with or without high-risk anti-diabetic agents this is part of the DISCOVER study, and they found that whether uh, this is the overall one, uh, high, uh, whether you are in low middle income countries or high upper middle income countries or high middle income countries, which includes India, uh, it doesn't matter. Every one across the uh, globe is uh, inappropriately given uh, glucose lowering agents that can cause hypoglycemia in the elderly. And what is the outcome? Well, you have more and more insulin-treated patients suffering from mild, moderate, and even so, uh, severe hypoglycemia as compared to the other groups. The UK prospective diabetes study found that uh, any kind of hypoglycemia, overall symptomatic, symptomatic, documented, nocturnal, severe requiring assistance, the incidence was much, much higher as compared to with insulin users as compared to sulfonylureas and as compared to any other anti-diabetic agent. So we know that management of diabetes in the elderly comes with its challenges. Now we have seen that and the ADA does recommend that screen them for cognitive function using these uh, different scales that we have. And they are very simple, three to 10 minutes is all it takes, but it requires an effort to do the same. 
So while we look at reducing the burden of hypoglycemia, we need to continue. I'll take a minute more. We need to uh, continue uh, inquiring about hypoglycemia with our patients and the non-specific symptoms if they are suffering from any. Evaluate the underlying causes and also look at the treatment target because we want to customize the HbA1c goal or target that we give them. But patient education undoubtedly is paramount in preventing hypoglycemia and for all the features like anticipating it or recognizing it or even preventing and managing it. We need to review their uh, medications which is obvious and avoid sulfonylureas, glyonides and even insulin as uh, required and uh, transfer them to drugs like these metformin, SGLT2 inhibitors, DPP4 inhibitors or even GLP-1 receptor agonists, which have been found to be associated with the lowest risk of hypoglycemia, even with other caveats. And what is the outcome of de-intensification? Well, it's pretty good because 10 studies have been uh, analyzed together by this group, and they found that the rates of de-intensification were not associated with any change in HbA1c level or even hypoglycemic episodes, falls or hospitalizations on de-intensification, and no significant differences were found in terms of adverse events. So why not de-intensify? And there is uh, thus available but limited evidence uh, suggesting that the benefits of de-intensification outweigh the harm in old people with type 2 diabetes with or without any comorbidities. Comorbid and the ADA standards of care also speaks to the same, whether you are healthy or with comorbidities, treatment simplification is necessary. So in summary, hypoglycemia in the elderly is very common but under-recognized. Consequences include neurocognitive dysfunction, cardiovascular events, frailty falls, fractures, and increased mortality. Feared by all and is a deterrent to optimal glycemic control. It's also mandatory to, for us to choose regimens which come with lower risk of hypoglycemia and overtreating should be avoided in the elderly. The intensification is also found to be safe and does not interfere with glycemic control. Patient education and self-management skills development is paramount in preventing this complication in the elderly. Thank you very much once again for a patient listening.